We are back for the 2013 European Ironman season. This week, we look at the legendary World Championship in Kona, Hawaii. Introduce some of the European favorites for the 2013 season showdown. Meet Daniel Unger, who made his Ironman debut at the 70.3 race in Mallorca. And show you all the highlights from this year's races. Swim 2.4 miles, bike 112 miles, run 26.2 miles, brag for the rest of your life. The words of Navy Commander John Collins still stand as the mantra of Iron Man. It all started in Hawaii in 1978 as a competition to determine the fittest person on the planet. The first event was won by Gordon Haller. Iron Man was born. But what placed Iron Man on the world map in 82 was the performance of Julie Moss. She was in the lead and only meters from fulfilling her dream when her body shut down and Kathleen McCartney passed her for the win. But the pictures of Moss crawling to the finish line became an inspiration for people worldwide. Throughout the 80s, Dave Scott dominated the sport, setting a record of six wins. In 84, he broke the nine hour mark, always leaving his rivals in second place. Until 89, when fellow American Mark Allen challenged him in a race that became known as the Iron Wall. Made a move and Scott appears unable to answer it. Until then, both men had been racing side by side. It was the end of Dave Scott's reign and the start of Mark Allen's. Until the mid-90s, Allen won another five Ironman crowns. Zimbabwean Paula Newby Fraser was larger than life in female Ironman racing, still holding the record of eight Hawaii victories. 96 was the year for Europeans to finally strike a win, when 27-year-old Belgian Luc van Leerde set a new course record that would last for 15 years. Two years later, Swiss Natasha Batman won the first of her six world titles. In 2007, Chrissy Wellington set off to become a Grand Dame of Ironman. Running the second fastest marathon time in history, she succeeded at her first attempt. Before retiring last year, Wellington has won four times in four starts. From 2007 to 2011, two Australian giants had a tight grip on the holy grail of Ironman. Chris McCormack won two and Craig Alexander three world titles in Hawaii making Kona an all-Australian affair for five consecutive years. In 2012, there was one question lingering over the hot lava. Who could break the Australian reign in Hawaii? Would it finally be the moment for a European athlete to strike again? With Marina von Hunacker of Belgium and German Andreas Reilert, the two fastest Ironman athletes in history were in contention. Exactly like in the previous four editions, power swimmer Andy Potts was out of the water first. Less than a minute behind, a chase group with Australian Pete Jacobs. At that point, Van Hunica was trailing by almost two minutes. 20 kilometers into the bike, the race was wide open. In the leading group, 2011 winner Craig Alexander. Keeping contact with the pack and taking the lead at 70 kilometers was Marino Van Hunica. As he was pushing the pace, only the man with the fastest bike splits, youngster Sebastian Kienle, could follow. But after Kienle lost five minutes due to a flat tyre, Van Hunica kept extending his lead. The Belgian got off the bike in a comfortable position, embarking on his run eight and a half minutes ahead of his closest chaser, Pete Jacobs. But disaster struck for Van Hunica about halfway through the marathon as he was forced to withdraw. Now the race was in Pete Jacobs' hands. Behind the Australian, Keenler, Farisal Sultan, Andreas Raylett and Frederick van Leerde all fighting for the podium. While Jacobs was in full control of the race, a fierce battle for second and third unfolded between Raylett and van Leerde. With the finish line in touching distance, Raylett powered away from the Belgian. Proving the most resilient in the tough conditions, Pete Jacobs made his Ironman dream come true in Kona, securing a sixth straight win for Australia ahead of Andreas Raylett and Frederick van Leerde. Kona is the ultimate goal. 
But how do Ironman athletes actually qualify for the prestigious event in 2013? By earning points in full distance and half Ironman races from the 1st of September 2012 to the 31st of August 2013. This is the current Kona Pro ranking. After the deadline in August, the 50 highest ranked males and 35 best female athletes will qualify to race in Hawaii. However, they must have finished one full distance Ironman race, excluding the World Championship in 2012. Depending on the international prestige of the races, varying amounts of points can be acquired. The highest number is one in Kona, where the winner gets 6,000 points. Of all the European full and half distance Ironman races, the Ironman France is one of the most prestigious events. Winning it for a third consecutive time would earn Frederick van Leerde 2,000 points. The Ironman in Klagenfurt will be a first for Andreas Raylet. Winning would mean 2,000 points as well. However, when in Frankfurt at the European Championship, the battle between defending champion Marino von Hunecker and 2012 Kona winner Pete Jacobs ensues, 4,000 points are at stake. Dirich Switzerland could see Ronnie Schilknecht win for a seventh time, which would earn him 2,000 points. The day of the Ironman Switzerland, there is a qualifying cutoff. The 40 highest ranked male and 28 best female athletes will now be qualified for Kona. In August, athletes can grab the remaining 10 spots for the men and seven for the women. So, who will be the best 50 men and the best 35 women in 2013? Europe's elite athletes have come close to winning the Ironman World Championship numerous times in recent years. But the last European victory in Hawaii dates back to Norman Stadler's 2006 triumph. Can the Australian dominance finally be broken this year? And which European can really challenge for the ultimate Ironman title? Ironman distance world record holder Andreas Raylet from Germany is always a contender. And with four podium finishes, the 37-year-old has been the most consistent European athlete in Kona in the last four years. But he's still chasing his ultimate dream of winning the Ironman World Championship. After last year's third place in Kona, Frederick van Leerde will now have more attention on him than ever before. At 34 years of age, the double Ironman France winner from Belgium is still relatively young. But it remains to be seen if this well-rounded athlete has enough experience to go all the way. Fellow Belgian Marina von Hunneke is one of the strongest and most experienced athletes in the world. Despite winning the 2012 European Championship in Frankfurt, he won't have fond memories of last year's Kona. After leading well into the run, von Hunneke's body shut down and he had to withdraw from the race. So, he's still looking to improve on his third place from 2010. 2012 was the breakthrough year for Germany's Sebastian Kienler who won the 70.3 World Championship, was second at the European Championship and ended up in fourth place in Kona, where a puncture cost him a podium. A strong cyclist, Kienle is the youngest of the Euro favorites and the future belongs to him. The most impressive athlete this season has so far been Eneco Llanos from Spain. With two victories, one an Ironman and one on the 70.3 distance, he is the informed guy. After coming back from an injury, this year he's fully focused on Kona and wants to go one better than in 2008 when he lost out by only 19 seconds to winner Chris McCormack. For the 29th time, competitors from all over the world lined up for the Ironman New Zealand in Taupo. In ideal conditions, Marco Albert from Estonia and New Zealander Bevan Doherty took the early lead in the swim and exited the water in first and second place. Albert and two-time Olympic medalist Doherty stayed ahead of the rest of the field throughout the bike course. But just before the 170-kilometer mark, the Kiwi made his move and took a two-minute lead onto the run. Powering home, the former ITU world champion claimed his first Ironman victory and also set a new course record in 8 hours, 15 minutes and 35 seconds. Oh, 
Despite the picturesque setting, horrendous conditions greeted the competitors at the Ironman Melbourne, where due to the choppy water, the swim was reduced to half distance. Australian Clayton Fettel was first out of the water, chased by a number of athletes, amongst them Belgium's Marina von Hunneke. On the bike, von Hunneke very quickly made up time, and by the 90-kilometer mark, he pulled away from the rest of the field. Taking a five-minute lead off the bike ahead of Craig Alexander, Van Hunneke once again struggled on the run and was finally overtaken by Neko Janos at the 34-kilometer mark. The Spaniard brought home the victory and celebrated his first Ironman win since 2011. There was a strong field of European pro athletes at the Ironman South Africa Nelson Mandela Bay. Spain's John Unanue finished the swim with a slight advantage, but was overtaken by 2005 Hawaii champion Faris Al Sultan before long. Al Sultan kept his lead on the bike until Swiss Ronnie Schuchnecht snatched it from him at the 100 kilometer mark. While Al Sultan withdrew due to technical problems, Schuchnecht kept increasing his lead and brought home his eighth Ironman career victory. Second and third place, Wintel Cyril Vianor and Baz Diederin respectively. A prestigious new member joins the Ironman family. Germany's Daniel Unger, 2007 world champion over the short distance, is up for a new challenge. We met the 35-year-old they call Ungerman at a training camp in Mallorca. I've achieved a lot in short distance racing. Almost everything I wished for as a little boy. But still, there was this restlessness. Quitting just like that was not how I imagined things to be. I thought maybe I'd regret it in two or three years. With this new goal of Ironman in mind, I have found new motivation, which has been missing for the past couple of years. There is a passion in my training now, which I've failed to conjure in the past two or three years. With his goal firmly set on competing at the World Championship in Hawaii, Daniel Unger recalls the moment he felt the Ironman spark back in 1995. I can remember Thomas Hellriegel's first race in Hawaii very well, when Mark Allen overtook him just before the finish line. That's a strong memory for me, being around 17 or 18 years old at the time. That's where I would like to be one day, at kilometer 38, maybe recalling the moment when Mark Allen outran Thomas Hellriegel. Back in Mallorca, there was a reunion of national teammates from the past. Ironman pro Andreas Raylet has a wealth of experiences Unger has yet to acquire. I have a respect for the sheer sum of kilometers, as I've never practiced sports for eight hours in a row. It'll be an absolutely new challenge, a new experience. On the one hand, I'm quite relaxed, having practiced sports at an elite level for 20 years, understand my body's signals, and how I need to react to them. On the other hand, my approach is an ambitious one, aiming to have maximum success at my first attempt. I want to see where my limits are. This can go down the drain, which I am aware of. After the break, we'll find out how Daniel Unger mastered his first Ironman 70.3 in Mallorca. After a successful training camp in Mallorca early in the year, former short-distance world champion Daniel Unger was back on the Balearic Island for the Ironman 70.3 Mallorca, his debut at the half-distance. It's still swimming, biking and running, but in my opinion it's a different sport. It's more a fight with yourself. You have to deal with the pain management. And over the Olympic distance, it was more of a race against the other competitors. To prepare for his first Ironman 70.3, Unger had to restructure his training program. The clear focus was on the bike. I've put a lot of hours, not just into the cycling, but also into finding the perfect bike setup. In my running, I've taken out some of the speed. I've changed the training structure and do less intensive units, but work more on my power and on long intervals. 
The day before the race, it was business as usual for Unga at the bike check-in. But as he went through his final preparations and transition, the nerves were slowly creeping in. Now it's about to happen, and the pre-race jitters are setting in. But that's a good thing, because for a good performance, you've got to be nervous at the start. But I'm also looking forward to the race. The morning of the race and ideal conditions awaited the 3,200 athletes. Daniel Unger was ready for the challenge. At the swim start, I'll go for it. The first few meters, you really have to put the hammer down. The pro field was lined up. Daniel Unger looked focused. And as the start pistol went, the European Ironman race season was officially open. On the swim, a group of about 10 men set the early pace, and soon a smaller group led by Axel Zeebrug from Belgium and Francis Stéphane Poulain took over the lead. Early on, Daniel Unger stayed within reach of the leaders, but after the halfway mark, Zeebrug, Poulain and a group of five other athletes stepped up a gear and took a small lead onto the bike. Zeebrug and Poulain at this point, 25 seconds ahead of Unger, with Francis Bertrand Biard exiting T1 as first athlete. In the chase pack, favorite Andreas Raylet, and a few seconds later, also 70.3 novice Daniel Unger. The first woman exiting the water and coming through transition one was Rahel Kuhn from Switzerland. At the front of the men's race, Bertrand Biard set the early pace on the bike, but after 15 kilometers, American Andrew Sturikovitz caught up with him and went into the lead. Soon the fastest Ironman bike rider in history really stamped his authority on the race. And by the 78 kilometer mark, he was 9 minutes 28 seconds ahead of Daniel Unger, who at times really struggled on the bike. In the women's race, Lucy Gossage and Tamsin Lewis took the initial control of the bike race, and Lewis looked in good shape. On the climbs, American Starikovitz managed to extend his lead, and the chase group was struggling to keep up with him. Coming into transition, he was nearly four minutes ahead of Biard and the other chasers. Daniel Unger was more than 11 minutes behind the leader. In the first hour, I couldn't really go as fast as I wanted to, but it's better now. At the front, Storikovic was quickly hunted down by Andreas Reilet and Bart Ernutz, who then were caught by Neko Janos, who had a sensational run. Unger at this point really had to dig deep, and despite his muscle problems, he gave his best to finish the race in a decent time. In the women's race, Austrian Lisa Hutala had taken the lead early on in the run, and the 30-year-old kept her chases like Yvonne van Flerken at bay. Up front, Janos and Ernutz had left Relit behind. But at the end, it was the Spaniard who prevailed on his home turf and secured his second victory of the season after winning the Ironman in Melbourne. The winner in Eko Janos with Ernutz in second and Relit in third. A few minutes later, Unger arrived, finishing in a respectable 16th place. And as Lisa Hutella claimed the women's title, Daniel Unger was reflecting on his first ever Ironman 70.3. It was a bit of a broken day for me today. I never really enjoyed it, and I knew beforehand that it would be a different type of race. Cold water and air temperatures forced the organizers to cancel the swim at the Ironman 70.3 St. Paulton, and the race started with a sprint to the bikes. Germany's Andy Becherer quickly took control of the race and together with a handful of riders, rode away from the rest of the field. Yvonne van Flerken was one of the favorites in the women's pro field, and as the ladies started their two-discipline journey, the men's race was about to get interesting. Andy Becherer proved his bike credentials he powered ahead on the tough climbs and really put down the hammer on the flats, averaging speeds of 41.2 kilometers an hour. A strong bike performance by the German, who entered transition in first place, followed by Bart Arenas from Belgium and Spain's Eneko Janos. <laughs> on the run, Arenas pounced straight away on Bucherer and tried to move away from the German. 
But the 30-year-old Bucher is stuck with the five-time Ironman 70.3 champion from Belgium, who now looked in charge of the race. Yvonne van Vlaken now starting for Austria, and her new compatriot Lisa Hutala had dominated the women's bike race and arrived in transition together. At the front of the men's race, Andy Bercher has struggled to keep up with Bart Aronutz, and the 29-year-old now clocked fast average speeds of 3 minutes 17 seconds per kilometer. In the meantime, Lisa Hutala had taken the sole lead in the women's race, Averaging speeds of 3.50 per kilometer, the 30-year-old mother charged ahead, leaving a suffering Yvonne van Flerken in her trail. It was a triumphant arrival at the finish shoot for Bart Aronutz, who claimed yet another Ironman 70.3 victory and was clearly delighted in beating strong contenders Andy Becherer and Eneko Janos into second and third place. Very happy now. It's, uh, it was an amazing race for me. I had a very good day. An equally excited Lisa Hutala from Austria, who won her second 70.3 race of the season after her victory in Mallorca. Could the Austrian possibly be a dark horse for Kona? Twenty twelve was the year when everyone's eyes in Kona were on Switzerland's Caroline Steffen. After having won the European Championship in Frankfurt for a second consecutive time, thirty four year old Steffen was the big favourite for the World Championship. And despite being in the lead for a long time, the victory was snatched away from her by another European athlete, Great Britain's Leander Kay. So, who are the big European contenders this season? After her triumphs at the Ironman 70.3 World Championship in Las Vegas and in Kona, Leander Cave has to be one of the favourites for this year's race. The US-based Brit rose to the top of the Ironman world with her impressive 2012 results, and she's looking to follow in the footsteps of fellow Brit Chrissy Wellington by winning consecutive Kona titles. The woman they call Zena has got two second-place finishes at the Ironman World Championship, but the 35-year-old has only got one goal on her mind, to win the most prestigious Ironman event in the world. Based in Australia, Stefan will have mixed emotions about her Kona races, but she's one of the strongest competitors in the world. The third European woman with a realistic chance in Hawaii is 35-year-old Rachel Joyce, whose fourth place in 2011 was her best Kona result so far. A very balanced athlete, she also trains in the US, and in 2013, she has already got a win at the Ironman Texas under her belt. In New Zealand, the expected two-horse race between Meredith Kessler and Gina Crawford didn't materialize, as Kessler led from the start with a brilliant swim to open a four-minute advantage on the bike. The 34-year-old was untouchable on the 180-kilometer bike course, and although losing some time on the run, she successfully defended her 2012 title ahead of Kiwi Gina Crawford, giving her a winning start to the 2013 Ironman season. In Melbourne, the women's swim was also reduced to half the distance due to weather conditions. And in a fast race, Americans Amanda Stevens and Meredith Kessler were in the lead after the swim. But it was unheralded Welsh athlete Corinne Abram who took charge of the race on the bike, leaving world-class competitors like 2012 Melbourne champion Caroline Steffen almost seven minutes behind. Abram kept up a staggering pace in the marathon, and while she was cruising towards the finish line, Yvonne van Flatken overtook Steffen in the battle for second and third. But it was former Welsh judo champion Abrams who celebrated her first ever Ironman victory. At the Ironman South African Nelson Mandela Bay, Great Britain's Jody Swallow controlled the race from the outset. Swallow gained an early advantage on the swim and kept increasing it throughout the 180 kilometer bike, heading into the run with a big lead of 18 minutes. 
But suddenly, with less than 10 kilometers to go, Jody Swallow started to struggle, and Jessie Donovan of the US passed her for her third Ironman title. Next week, we have all the highlights of the Ironman 70.3 UK in Wimbledon. Meet three-time Wimbledon winner Fraser Cartmel from Scotland and find out all about the challenging course. And follow Michael Raylett at the inaugural Ironman 70.3 Berlin.